City of Milton Common Council meeting Tuesday, May 21st. We will call it to order at 6 p.m. And can I get confirmation of appropriate meeting notice? Meeting notice was posted at Milton City Hall, Milton Piggly Wiggly, and Hometown Ace Hardware. Thank you. Approval of agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We have an agenda, and Linda Clark has volunteered to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome back, Linda Clark. We're going to go ahead and have Chief Pickering give us his report for public comments. Alder Smith, start, your, start the timing. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, board has a copy of the report. You can take a look at it. Um, again, continues to be a kind of a busy time for us. City of Milton, uh, 41 calls during the month. This is April, even though we're, what, three weeks into May. Um, 198 so far for the year, average response, five minutes and nine seconds. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. Prevention, staffing, uh, everything's doing pretty well. Uh, if you flip to page two, um, finances, they look really good on the report, although the board members um, have heard uh, May is a three payroll month uh, as compared to a two, so we expect that to, to go red and uh, we just have to work our way back out of that deficit um, over the course of the year. Um, significant events, that's really the thing that I'll spend a couple of minutes on. Uh, I swear, and Chief, I don't know about how the law enforcement side of April went, but it was like every day was a full moon. Um, and then May has not really gotten any better, by the way. Um, you can kind of see the list there. I gave you some pictures uh, of some of the events just so you can kind of get a size and scope of the things that your crews are dealing with. Um, some crashes, obviously the Albion incident, uh, the crash over in Whitewater, which I think it just happened before last month, so that's nothing new. Um, the one about the car versus power pole on Highway 59, we're going to put a plaque on that pole and officially number it pole number 13, because um, that's the same High Line pole that was taken out by the tornado. Uh, so apparently that pole is possessed. Um, the thing that made that so hard, in, in this picture you can kind of see it, you see a white post coming down with the wires attached to it coming down on the car. Um, that was 24,000 volts and they were live. Um, so it took, and this is, I, this is in no way um, a dig at the power companies. Uh, but it took an hour and 17 minutes, literally, to get the power shut down. These are the high lines that served all of Evansville and all of Footville. So we literally, they, they tried very hard to help us uh, so we could get to the victim. Uh, but it, in the end, they just had to shut the power down. There, there was no other way to, to do it, and they did. Um, so the third picture is just for tongue-in-cheek. By the time they got it shut down, we were in the middle of a hailstorm. Can't go much better than that. Um, on the back side, uh, did have a fire in the town of Fulton. Um, insurance company, very complimentary. Crews kept it to the area of origin and a lot of the actual product. This was a cold storage facility for an HVAC company. A lot of the product actually all recoverable. Um, so, you know, did exactly what they're supposed to do. And literally, before we were clear from the fire, two semis decided to go at each other out on the interstate. <laughs> um, so it was an entertaining day. And then this bottom picture, for those of us who are um, car buffs, that is a 1964 Chevelle. Um, father and son had worked on it to restore it. Um, son drove it to school on Monday, and we came and helped him with his problem Monday afternoon. <laughs> I loved the comment by dad when he got there. He goes, hey, we restored it once, we'll restore it again. So, love the attitude. Um, I, I guess that's kind of it, right? I mean, any questions anybody has? I know media's done a good job covering most of the things we've been involved in. Uh, there's just a lot of them. Any questions? 
was pretty good. I appreciate it. Good luck tonight. Yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. Good luck tonight. (laughs) Take care, folks. Um, we, oh, shoot, he left. (laughs) I should have had him stay. Um, Teresa, maybe at the next, uh, board meeting, you can take with you the, uh, Emergency Medical Services Week proclamation and the National Public Works Week proclamation. Does anybody, would you like me to read these or I don't want to be disrespectful to, to anybody We um, love and appreciate our public employees. Um, Approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, say aye. Anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. Item number eight, discussion and possible action regarding a conditional use permit to allow a detached private garage exceeding 800 square feet the size of my apartment at 350 East Madison Avenue. Uh, Ryan Holbrook has requested a conditional use permit to build an 832 square foot detached garage on his property located at 350 East Madison Avenue. City code requires owners before building a detached private garage exceeding 800 square feet obtain a conditional use permit. Uh, The plan meets all other requirements of the code. Uh, Planning Commission did uh, recommend a favorable recommendation to approve this conditional use permit uh, for uh, Mr. Holbrook. And we did um, have a public hearing at Planning Commission. I have not received any feedback from any neighbors. Has uh, I don't think anybody has. So, okay. Any questions, comments, or a motion? I would move we approve the conditional use permit for. Uh, the detached private garage exceeding 800 square feet at 350 East Madison Avenue. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Anyone abstaining? All right, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding the commercial facade grant request for 120-122 Merchant Row. Jake and Fred LLC uh, has applied for the city's commercial facade grant to install two new windows, new trim, new railing, and painting. Uh, The total cost of the project is $6,480. The grant request is for $3,240, half of the expense. Um, This facade does face first lane, and the Community Development Authority voted to recommend that the City Council award uh, Jake and Fred LLC this commercial facade grant. Uh, The funding for this grant would be provided by Tax Incremental Financing District Number 7. There is, um, is there a motion or any questions or comments? I'd make a motion that we approve the commercial facade improvement grant request from Jake and Fred LLC for the property located at 120 and 122 Merchant Row in the amount of $3,240. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding resolution 2024-06 in support of clean sweep. Um, this is <clears throat> as stated a resolution in support of the clean sweep program. The clean sweep program is a program that uh, the city participates annually in funding through uh, Rock County uh, it provides a service to uh, residents and businesses of the county. Um, last year, we did have a clean sweep on site. At some point in the future, we may have one again. This year, there's clean sweeps located in uh, the Rock County Public Works facility and um, City of Beloit, I believe. Um, the resolution allows for uh, support of a grant ap- or grant applications um, by Rock County to uh, offset some of the funding costs. And are those dates still upcoming? I, I would have to check. I know okay. one is. The Rock County one may have already taken place. Okay, I can't remember. Thanks. Is there a motion or questions or comments? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2024-06. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Discussion and possible action on modifying the commercial facade grant. 
the Community Development Authority voted to modify the commercial facade grant to allow tenants to apply for funding, as well as owners of property using different timelines since they may have differing needs. Uh, currently, the commercial facade grant guidelines state total grant funding for any single property may not exceed two grants within any, any four-year four year period. The modifications made allow for the owners to have two grants in any four-year period and the tenant to have two grants in any four-year period as well. Tenants would be required to provide a copy of their lease, indicating that they have at least three years remaining in their tenancy. And I've uh, attached it, or the guideline draft and application draft with those modifications show. Discussion or questions or comments about this? I think the CDA had a pretty comprehensive discussion and thoughtful discussion about that. Um, and I know Eric was there, Chisa was there, and Bill was there. Uh, yeah, I was on the CDA at the time, and um, you know, the we had several business owners that uh, did come to that session, and I think they made a very strong case that sometimes the uh, the tenant and the owner have very different uh, needs, uh, both of which help improve properties. Uh, some of the examples given would be um, the tenant wanting a um, a signed awning, for example, um, that um, uh, and rather than have the tenant and the uh, uh, the landlord competing uh, for these dollars, this sort of provides for uh, a couple of parallel streams. So I'm for the program as well, um, and I had one going into the weeds on this. One small detail would be nice to change. The requirement states that. The tenant has to have three years remaining in their lease, which is fine in my opinion, but to prove that they give a copy of their lease. And I was wondering if we could also accept a letter from the landlord stating that so that a tenant doesn't have to make public record the full lease agreement that they've signed because there's sometimes a lot of meat to that where maybe you negotiate for certain upgrades, they pay for certain things. There's just a lot of more private numbers that get shared if we give a lease and a letter from the landlord, still there, they're putting their name on the line and, and saying that it exists. If it could um, <clears throat> achieve the same goal, I would like to see that be considered. So do you want us to take that back to CDA then? So there's a number of tenants that want to do it, so is that, that's the only next step? We can't... Uh... Could we approve it in its present form and then amend it at a future meeting after CDA? Um, are there any legal ramifications to this <coughs> change or suggestion of change? Or do you want to wait and give an opinion at a later date? <laughs> well, so the question is, is the CDA recommendation binding on the council? Mm. Uh, that's no. true. That was that's one question, but that wasn't <laughs> the one that I was thinking of. I, um, I, I know like that, that it's that. not. <laughs> okay. Well, so assuming that again, I haven't researched it, but assuming that's accurate, then that it's a recommendation of the council, and the council has the authority to establish whatever guidelines it feels is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh? Is there any? significance in having a letter versus like a notarized letter I mean how do we I mean how would we know that a tenant didn't forge a signature I guess I, I, I don't know I'm just like thinking you know the most negative way I could think I guess well no I, do, I don't consider it negative I think it's important I could see Having, if it's going to be a letter from the, I could see it being notarized, yeah. as opposed to a lease that's got two sets of signatures on it, that's typically is a legal document as opposed to just a letter on somebody's letterhead, which is not a legal document. I, I could see adding a notarization to it. I think that's a word. Would you like? Do you concur with Ken's legal opinion? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, that's within the discretion of the council. It's not required. But if you want to include that as a requirement, you can. It's still um, a 
quote unquote legal representation, whether it's notarized or not. So the the reason for the notarization, as you say, would be to verify that the person who says they signed it is the person who signed it. You can add that. I mean, you don't notarize a lease, usually, unless you're going to record it. So It's up to the council. <laughs> so the letter could have both signatures on it, tenant and landlord. Yeah, so you can, right, you can do that. You can notarize both of them, whatever, you know, whatever you feel like. And they like could you come need. into City Hall and do that because we have notaries at City Hall, too. Just curious, ahead, though, but we are accepting leases that don't need to be notarized. So could we have an option of two forms of verification? Is that what you're asking? Either or. I understand that's um, all the person's documents recommendation is to have either a lease or a signed letter yeah. from the landlord. And so then the only question, if that's something that the council wishes to favorably consider is whether or not just the signature of the landlord is sufficient or whether you want to have both signatures on there and whether you want to have them notarized so the application does require the applicant to sign so if they were including a letter from their landlord so it's the <clears throat> if i understand it correctly it is the lease that makes this application and then you would submit with the application a letter from the landlord that'd be correct or the or lease the if they want if they don't mind sharing the lease yeah. Yeah. i know charlotte wouldn't you know care it's just an option for tenants that want to keep private oh, if, no if i i'm good i'm not too. like making a comment on it either way i'm just trying to help us like think through it I guess I'd like to make a motion to prove the suggested amendment of the commercial facade grant with the addition of uh, providing a, as an option instead of the lease uh, a, a notarized letter from the landlord second there's a motion and a second any further questions clarifications or comments yeah, I have a clarification. So on that letter, are we looking for just the landlord signature or the landlord and the tenant signature? In my motion, I was just looking for the landlord signature. Just the landlord. Yep, okay. Because I don't know if it's really necessary to have the tenants as well. And since it's on the application. The right, since it's on the application and all that. And they're the ones okay. turning it in. Just want to clarify. And I'll abstain from this one. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Yeah. Discussion, impossible action regarding resolution 202407 regarding the compliance maintenance annual report. Uh, the CMAR is an annual report required by the Department of Natural Resources for wastewater treatment facilities. Uh, it's a self-evaluation tool that promotes the owner's awareness and responsibility for wastewater collection and treatment needs, measures the performance of a wastewater treatment work during a calendar year, and assesses its level of compliance with permit requirements. Uh, the ranking is performed on a, a zero to four point scale. Um, the City of Milton's treatment facility scored 3.95. Um, <clears throat> that indicates that the wastewater utility uh, or the reason for the decrease below four this year was the same as last year because of the um, uh, user charge system review having not occurred within the last zero to two years. Um, we are in the volunteer, voluntary range for improvements and have an A rating for our treatment facility. Uh, the treatment plant staff have consistently done an excellent job of maintaining an A rating for the city's treatment facilities. The recommended motion has no fiscal impact. Um, so just looking for uh, 
approval of resolution 202407 for submittal to the Department of Natural Resources. Um, I have a question. So is there some sort of, um, I, I don't think we did anything wrong. Let me say that, first of all, not having a wastewater utility rate within the last two years. But I'm just um, wondering, like, is everybody having a wastewater utility rate study every two years? Or is that, I mean, I, I, I'm just a little surprised that we got dinged for that, even yeah, though it's I mean, not that's been um, consistently in the ranking criteria. It's not new. It's, it's existed in the CMAR for many years. Um, I think that that zero to two years is a recommendation uh, from the DNR, hence the reason that we're in the voluntary range for improvements. Um, I don't know what other communities are doing, how often they're doing them. Uh, there's different reasons for doing a utility rate study and different um, approaches as to when they should be accomplished and when they're needed. So. Okay, thanks. I was just wondering. Any other questions from anyone or comments? Make a motion to approve resolution 2024-07. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a work order from Baxter and Woodman for design and construction engineering services for utility extensions on Chicago Street. Baxter and Woodman has uh, prepared a work order to perform design and construction engineering services for utilities on Chicago Street. Uh, this work order provides for design and engineering construction related services for the water and sewer extensions on Chicago Street. Uh, the water extensions mm -hmm. will eliminate a dead end, which is encouraged by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and the sewer extension will connect to a 15-inch unused main that was installed in 2008 in anticipation of this extension. Uh, the sewer line will be able to serve approximately 200 acres uh, south of State Highway 59. It gives us access to that 200 acres. It does not actually uh, provide service for that 200 acres. Uh, fees for the service are based on the engineer's standard hourly billing rates for actual work time performed, plus reimbursements for out-of-pocket expense. Uh, they're not to exceed fees 20800 for the design phase and 20800 for construction observation phase for a total of 41600 uh, the water department will pay for its portion of the expense uh, either through savings or by special assessment and the water wastewater expense will be done through special assessment as well uh, city administration recommends approving this work order prepared by baxter and woodman uh, for the chicago street utility extensions um, i will also comment that we've got two uh, very strong potential developments that we've been working on currently that will require this extension uh, to receive uh, sanitary sewer service uh, for their buildings. And did those recoupment, the recoupments are a special assessments not built into a development agreement? Uh, one is built into a development agreement, one is not. Okay, Thanks. And that's just partial. We would be special assessing that whole 200 acre area uh, that would be utilizing this sewer line uh, at some point, and that would, the assessment would occur when they hook up to that sewer line. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? Move to recommend approving the work order prepared by Baxter and Woodman Inc. for the Chicago Street Utility Extension. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. That motion carries discussion and possible action regarding sidewalk grinding. Um, excuse me. The city performs various types of sidewalk maintenance. Um, uh, the one one effort that's taken every year is, or almost every year, is sidewalk grinding. Uh, we also do replacements or um, raising sidewalks as well. Um, Safe Step LLC provided a proposal of thirteen thousand one hundred sixty-three dollars and fifty-five cents to grind to one hundred forty-two locations throughout the city. Uh, the general fund budget includes funding for street maintenance and construction that will be used if approved. Additional grinding, if uh, required, would be approximately $25 per linear foot. As required by city purchasing policy, projects receiving only one quote require a three-fourths vote of the Common Council. 
City Administration recommends approving the contract with Safe Step LLC for sidewalk grinding subject to publication of a Class 1 notice. Is this in addition to the work that they did last summer, or uh, was that work not completed? No, nope, that, that was completed last year. This would be this year's project. Okay. I'm assuming we're happy with their work. They have been working in the city, um, I think going back to 2015, and yeah, they've done a good job. They're efficient and clean up, and we've been happy with them. And there's not a lot of other vendors that we're aware of that perform this specific type of work. Any other questions or comments? Are there other, loca <clears throat> other locations for next year than two, or is this getting close to the end of the list? Um, we, we walk staff, public work staff walks the city or, you know, a large portion of the city in the spring to determines the list. We provide that to Safe Step, their view, take their measurements, um, and then, you know, if the work's approved, they do the grinding work. We do not. We do not have a list of grinding for next year, and we won't until after this project is completed. Sometime, you know, we, we could start a list. Of course, if something comes up, we would we start keeping track of it. But we have them come to town once a year. So, is is there other sidewalk maintenance, uh, you know, mud jacking or anything like that that happens? Uh, I was surprised at the relatively low cost of the. Of, of, of the grinding, I assume other solutions are more expensive. Yeah, in the Safe Step proposal, they do provide some comparison. It's not, um, it, it's not, I guess, entirely apples to apples for every situation because the different types of repair needed wouldn't warrant, you know, grinding or wouldn't warrant a, a, a mud jacking. But we do have and have performed some mud jacking, and we do also do just uh, removal and replacements as well. I'll recommend the approval of the contract with Safe Step for sidewalk grinding subject to the or publication of a Class 1 notice. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. You want to post? All right, that motion carries. Discussion on possible action de declaring public works and utility items as surplus. Uh, the Public Works Department is requesting authorization to declare the 2009 Chevy W4500 water van as surplus. Council policy number five requires any item with an estimated value of over $2,000 to uh, obtain common council approval to be declared surplus. Um, recently, a water... Uh, a water van was purchased to replace this vehicle. Um, at the time, we asked the dealer what the estimated value of our current vehicle was, and that is included um, to be in the range of 14,000 to you know just under 20,000. So we took the average and are proposing a transfer of $16,625 from the capital fund to the water utility um, to make the vehicle uh, to transfer the vehicle from a water utility vehicle to a streets department vehicle. Um, and then we would request the ability to sell the water van toolbox because that would no longer be needed as well. Questions or comments or a motion? I'll make a motion to authorize the transfer of $16,625 in capital funds to the water utility for the existing water van and to sell the toolbox with proceeds deposited to the capital fund. Say it. All those in favor say aye. So we, uh, Attorney Sh Schrader <clears throat> clarified, we need to also declare the uh, water van toolbox as surplus so we can sell that. I'll make a motion to declare the water van the toolbox as surplus. Okay, so do you want to just amend your first a motion, just like and? Because we have a motion in a second that we haven't voted on yet. Yeah. Do we want, okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it out of body experience. So make the uh, motion to... <laughs> Make the uh, water 
Band toolbox surplus. Second. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> Gosh, there must be a tornado on its way. <laughs> All right, here we go. Discussion and possible action regarding 2024-25 committee commission and board appointments. Sorry, Trimberger has submitted questionnaires to be included on committees and commissions. And after review, Mayor Welch has recommended that Sorry be appointed to the Ethics Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals. These are actually both alternates in the those boards and commissions um, and now it just needs council confirmation i'll recommend the city appointments to the ethics board and the zoning board appeals Second. all those in favor say aye anyone opposed all right that motion carries general linda clark's general items <laughs> Committee reports or general items. Go ahead. Well, I'll start with historic preservation. We met last week, and we are looking at possibly trying to <clears throat> work on a project maybe with Public Works to uh, do some work in the cemetery. And on that same grain, we're also there's this Saturday from one to three is a tombstone cleaning uh, event at the cemetery as well, and then. <clears throat> Outside of that, for the Civil War Living History Days, we had 1,000 kids here on Friday, and then we had several hundred people on Saturday and several hundred people more on Sunday. Uh, people from as far away as Florida, South Carolina, Virginia, New York, of the states that we know of outside of Wisconsin and Illinois, and then people who we know for sure came specifically for the event on the weekend. We had um, a Boy Scout troop from Fond du Lac all the way down here for the event. So I wanted to share that. So good great weekend. turnout, great weather. Despite all the other activities that are going on this last weekend, we actually had a fantastic turnout. Congratulations. I know how much work you guys put into that. A lot of work. Anything else on any committee reports? Um, I can just give a brief update from Parks. Um, there was a discussion regarding uh, Dog Park Cleanup Day. That was set for October 12th. Um, we're going to relocate a scoreboard at South Goodrich Park from the kickball field to the softball field. There was also discussion regarding the Parks and Recreation Commission membership that will um, at some point likely have an ordinance before council for review. And there was some other discussion regarding um, this golf course and um, other improvements at Lamar Park. So, yeah, we had a pretty active meeting for parks. Thanks. Any other committee reports? Eric, did you attend a library committee meeting? <laughs> Not since last council meeting, unfortunately. I would have went if there was one. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for anyone? Okay. Um, we'll have Jenny go first as staff reports for her special day. I do not have any items this evening. <laughs> and then we will have Paul go for his special day. <laughs> uh, staff continues to work on uh, development in the city. Um, we've got a couple of big ones coming down in the pipeline in the next couple of meetings. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, obviously, I want to thank uh, staff and council here tonight on uh, the hard work we've done over the last couple of days with the strategic plan. Um, thank you for taking the time to be involved. I think this is a really important moment in the city, and uh, it's great to hear all the good communication going on between staff and amongst the council, and uh, it's really, really good to see uh, us working really well together. So, And, and it was posted. That communication was all posted. <laughs> and... You know, being transparent, I just want to make sure that everybody knows those meetings are posted. Yeah. And recorded. It should also be noted that uh, Paul is about to become a City of Milton taxpayer. Yeah, and we will be reassessing his house yeah. accordingly that he's buying. We would like to hold off that announcement until after closing. <laughs> <laughs> there
there are no secrets because we are fully transparent. Some people have birthdays today. Some people do. I don't know who they are. I mean, I might know who they are, but. <laughs> Chief? Uh, nothing hard and fast, uh, but we are working on um, some more community involvement projects for the department. Um, we're working on a fraud presentation um, coming up in June. Uh, the date, I think it's set, I'm just not 100% sure what the date was. And there's nothing been public, um, made public for that yet. And then I'm also working um, with the Gathering Place. They requested to host another event. I'm um, looking to do something with security around the prop personal properties, business properties. Um, so that'd be another opportunity for um, some members of our department to go and get out in the public and um, preliminary talks with Sharla also to do something at her venue as well for a uh, sit down and open venue for discussions with members of our department. Um, other than that, nothing else um, newsworthy from our side. There will be tomorrow now that you've said that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, I know the library is incredibly boring, but can you try to just make something up to excite us? I surely can. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this last time, but the library did receive a grant from the Melton Fund um, with the help of Sarah Stuckey um, that allows us to purchase outdoor movie equipment for our gazebo and story gardens. So we have a pull-down screen, a huge inflatable movie screen, a sound system and a projector. So this will allow us to do some fun programming outdoors and enhance some of our other programming. I really want to try to get a movie night schedule sometime in the next month. So cross my fingers on that. Um, today, Marika and I visited Northside. Harmony students visited the library. I'll be at middle school tomorrow, all day. Marika will be at Northside on Thursday, and Jamie has already visited the other elementary schools, so we can talk about our summer programming. So the last two weeks of May are always pretty fast and furious for us, as we talk about all the stuff happening at the sun, at, for the summer. And then I wanted to share that the Melton Youth Coalition's um, youth group, the Substance Prevention Society, also known as SPS, is hosting a mental health event tomorrow at Schoberg Park. It's a free, stress-free event for middle school and high school students, and it's um, led by the youth group. So. Very cool. Okay, Mark, anything? No. Okay. I heard there was a little messy situation with some stuff being dumped. <laughs> but we cleaned that up, right? The yard waste bins? Or? Yes, okay. yes. So, we do have yard waste bins. We did have some um, We've done some outreach regarding those and the use of those to try to uh, educate the public on the appropriate use of those yard waste bins. Um, get the yard waste that's acceptable into the yard waste bins. Trees, branches are not acceptable. Um, if the bins are full, there's an overflow spot to the side that can be used, but not directly in front of the bins or the recycler cannot come haul it away. And we also have a dumpster on site for garbage related to the yard waste. So if you're bringing in bags or other things that are not compostable, that can go in the dumpster. So maybe the library could do a TikTok video while TikTok's still legal. <laughs> Kelsey? Oh, okay. So anything else? Am I missing anything on the agenda? Because my... I just, if I can just remind everyone, we're having a Memorial Day program ceremony on Monday, um, the 27th, 9 a.m. in Veterans Park to honor our fallen heroes. So please come if you're able. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Okay. So, <clears throat> in my not so wonderful handwriting, but I was trying to make it readable for folks like me that are over the age of 50. So, but the font did decrease as I went, on, went along. So there's um, behind Kelsey and Mark and Mark, number one is washer dryer, number two is stove refrigerator, number three is internet TV phone. It is the months of December, January, and February. Pick number one, two, or three. What will you give up for those three months? In Wisconsin, in the state of Wisconsin, are you going to... Would you be willing to give up your washer and dryer for those three months, your stove and refrigerator, or all of your internet, TV, phone access? Washer and dryer, it's okay. 
Yeah, washer and dryer. I can't work without three, so. <laughs> you can wash your clothes in the sink and hang them. Yeah. 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 Oh, you can always hang them up outside, let them freeze, and then when you bring them in, they'll dry. Me. And I really do, I, to work, I do need internet in the phone. Yep. So, yeah. I'm doing number I'm, two. I'm with you. I'm, I'm glad you're at the other end of the. <laughs> Dryer. They used to do it on locks in a river, and it worked know. just fine. Yeah, but so. it's, fro it's cold outside. I can put my groceries outside, and I have a nice heat lock, so. Mm. No, I I, we used need to hang I need Jenny to go. We used to hang dry in the, win in the, in the winter, and yeah. it worked just fine. I like warm clothes. So they're without a washer, dryer, or freezer. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're, we're going to let Jenny talk now. No. So... <laughs> I'm meaning clarification <laughs> of going without one of those that is just in your own personal home. Yes, yes, just your own personal So I would go without the internet, TV, and phone because there's many areas that have public access, such as the library for internet, um, which then washer and dryer, I know I don't want to live without and still wear a refrigerator. I do, yeah. So I would say I would go without number three. There's also places you can go to use a washer and dryer as well. Like the mil the laundromat down. In the the library should provide the washer and dryer service too. That would be great. I would go with. I'm doing two as well. Gee, I'm I'd, one. I'm one. I'd I'd mix and match. I'd give up TV, and I'd give up the, I I'd give up the stove. See, I uh, pick no, one can't. of each. Okay, well, I wasn't clear on that, but okay. <laughs> well, if we're doing I'll, that, I'll give up the TV and the dryer. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with one. Well, since I'm living without a washer and dryer now, I'll just keep that plan going. <laughs> living without internet, too. I'll just give up. I'll just give up one different one each day of the week. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I just need to know who is not checked in yet, Ashley and Chief yeah. and Mark. I don't have a washer dryer, so that'd be easy enough to give up. I'll See, some of us are roughing it. <laughs> I'll follow Jenny's suit and I'll give up number three. Good job. Cause now, this is your whole, your whole family has to give it up, so that's okay. If. I'm not in the house at the same time. Yes. <laughs> so you're sleeping at the PD for how long? Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have a cot in his office now. <laughs> That's only going to be the budget request items for 25. Kelsey, did you go? I just went the last two weeks without a washer and dryer, and I won't ever do it again. So I'm going to go with number three, because if it's just personal, there's other places we can use. Okay. So. Challenge is on. My last three months as mayor. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Right there. I, I, I'm a, okay, every, no, no. Our legal opinion has not come from our Linda's not trying to... Well, I thought that Linda, Eric was going to let Linda do the memorial announcement, but he didn't. Sorry. <laughs> Linda's going after Mark. <laughs> All right. So now... We got more specificity on the rules. It's just not what you are willing to give up. It's what your household is willing to give up or what you're willing to impose on your household to give up, right? It's an authoritarian, yeah. Yeah, and that works in my household, yeah. Um, well, obviously, assuming that I want to preserve my health and well-being, then... I'll need to go with number two because to have a teenage daughter in the house with no washer and dryer or internet TV or phone, that's that's not going to really happen. Survival. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to not be able to cook or whatever for three months, I guess they can probably suffer on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes. Oh. 
Okay, we got everybody here. Linda. Then it's Linda. She's going after the marks. So I want to point that out. <laughs> After the <laughs> and she's been really quiet all night, so let's give her five minutes. Go ahead and let her know. I think you guys are all going to survive if we have any natural disaster. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Good job. All right. When's our next meeting? June? June 4th. June 4th. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Nice to see you, Linda. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe tonight. And stay safe, our first responders.